let's be, be consistent. Welcome to the Key to Consistency. I am your host, Rakia Collins. And on today's episode, we are going to be exploring the relationship between consistency and nature. I am so excited to really kind of chat with you guys about the importance of nature, really the power of nature and how incorporating being in nature in our daily lives can really help us foster a sustainable relationship with the environment and really begin to really just appreciate the natural beauty that we have around us. And so when we think about nature and kind of what it is and what it represents, I was pretty astonished to find out that spending time in nature can really have a profound impact on our physical, mental, and emotional health and overall well-being. Like research has shown that even if we take a short walk in green spaces, that can help reduce our stress. It can help lower our blood pressure and overall boost our moods. Nature has a remarkable ability to really soothe our minds and really help rejuvenate our spirits and just kind of keep us uplifted. So I would encourage you, whether you are Someone who still has to, you know, go into the office a few days out of the week or if you work from home, just to take time to go outside for a while, even if it's just going outside to sit in your backyard and you sit in your backyard and just look at the trees. Or if you actually, you know, put your shoes on and you decide, you know what, I'm going to just go for a walk in my neighborhood, especially before it gets too cold, it would just be I would say it would behoove you to get more comfortable and get more acclimated with nature. I find that especially around this time of year where the leaves are changing and it's kind of that fall time of year, it is wonderful just to kind of be out in nature when it's not too hot, but it's not too cold. And even if you start off with just a few minutes a day, doing it again consistently over time, you'll begin to surely reap those benefits. So when we talk about kind of the science behind nature and its benefits, um, science really supports the fact that many of us feel different when we are in nature for sustained periods of time, right? When you're in nature, studies have shown that you have an enhanced ability to feel to feel and to actually be creative. It helps improve your concentration and it really just increases your overall well-being along with just acting as like a natural elixir for our minds and for our bodies. So even if you decide to say, I let's say you, you work from home and you decide, you know what, rather than me working inside all the time, I'm going to just, you know, take maybe the 30 minute meeting and I'm going to have my laptop and I'm going to sit outside or better yet, if you have wireless headphones and you can leave your laptop inside and maybe just walk around your backyard or put your shoes on and maybe walk out to the mailbox if you're on a meeting where you may not necessarily have a speaking role, but you're really just there to listen. You'll be surprised at how those small things that we can do just to help us change up our environment are really going to have a profound and outstanding impact on our mentals and on on our well-being. So I would say, again, as mentioned earlier, if you are on a meeting where you don't have to really speak, you're just really there to kind of gain information. If you're even doing some work and you may feel stuck or you may feel stressed, you know, considering taking a break, right? And kind of going outside and just taking a few deep breaths while you're out in nature, you'll be surprised at what that does for your mental state of mind. And of course, the podcast would not be complete if we did not focus on consistency as a part of being out in nature. The benefits that I've been talking about so far as it relates to your physical and mental and emotional well-being, they're all great and dandy but you won't necessarily reap those benefits if you don't do them consistently, right? So of course, the first time you go outside, you take that deep breath, 
you're going to feel amazing. There's no doubt about it. However, for that sustained benefit over time, it's going to behoove you to continue to do the same thing, right? Meaning if you know, okay, around 2 p.m., I tend to be more stressed out because a lot of work tends to come my way in the afternoon time and it just really sucks and it's really unfortunate. If you get yourself in the habit of before that, that 2 p.m. time, what I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to clear my mind before I know I have to rush and get into this particular workload. It'll really just help you make sure that you are even keel throughout the remainder of your day and that you're not putting yourself mentally in a position to continue to exacerbate yourself. Because what we'll often find, and I can speak from my own experience, is that when I know around a certain time of the day, I tend to be stressed or I tend to feel an influx of emotion that happens day after day after day. What then tends to happen is that even on the weekends, I still feel... I feel the same way around the same time of day, right? And it's because I've gotten myself in the habit of feeling that way around the same time every single day. So what we want to do is we want to continue to expose ourselves to better habits, such as being out in nature and allowing that to help us lower our stress in the moment, help us stay calm. And then from there, we can begin to engage in those situations that are less than ideal and hopefully Hopefully, by engaging in nature prior to those meetings or even post those meetings or those activities, you'll begin to see that they're not taking as big of a toll on you as they once did because you've now, you know, created a routine around being in nature. And so even though I gave the example of a particular meeting in the middle of the day or something from a work related standpoint that happens in the middle of your day, you necessarily have to be exposed to nature around that same time, right? If you wanted to do a a morning walk or if you wanted to do something in the evening, you know, kind of once you are done um, with your day or on your lunch break, whatever you want to do in terms of time, make it work for you. The only thing I would say is consistency in exposing yourself to nature is only going to amplify the positive effects that you're going to feel on a go forward basis, right? And so the next thing that I want to talk to you guys about is going to be making this a priority, right? Of course, we are super busy and we don't necessarily have oftentimes the time that we wish we had in order to make things like being out in nature a priority, especially if we wear, you know, multiple hats throughout the day. We may really feel like, man, I don't really have the time necessary to do this. But let me tell you, you don't have the time not to do this. The way that nature makes us feel is, as we've talked about so far, is not just something that is in our heads. It's not just something that's isolated to a certain type of human or humans from a certain background. It is a benefit that all humans can and should experience. Um, and that's really where when we think about making nature a priority, We're not necessarily, I'd say at this point, focusing on the quantity, meaning the amount of time that you can spend in nature, but let's try to focus on the quality of time, right? So if you know that, hey, for me, it's going to be when I walk my kids to the school bus, rather than deciding I'm going to walk them to the school bus and then walk back home, like, why don't you decide to say, I'm going to maybe take an additional five or 10 minutes and just stand outside and just take a couple of deep breaths, right? Before. I walk back in the house or if you have the time, you can decide, you know what, I'm going to, I never really drive or walk past my house because I don't live down that street, but let me walk down, maybe walk in the cul-de-sac and then maybe turn around and walk towards my house again. Like, let me try to take these few extra moments just to be out in nature. And I would encourage you when you're out there and you're taking these moments to yourself, try not to think about anything. Try not to think about the day that you have ahead of you or what didn't go right that morning when you were getting the kids ready for school or what you have to do to prepare for dinner. Try to really just take those moments and be introspective with yourself and just kind of check in and say, huh. 
All I'm going to do is just deep breathe in this moment. And you'll be surprised how just taking a couple of deep breaths, being sure to check in with yourself, how positively that can impact your day and your mood. Because now you're no longer, you know, focusing on, I got to go from this task to this task to this task. You are creating space in between those tasks. It's the same thing where if you, you know, work from home or if you work in a space where it's kind of corporate and you may have a lot of meetings and you decide I'm not going to start a meeting at 1 p.m. and then end the meeting at 2 p.m. and then I have another meeting from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. and 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. As of late um, with the work that I do, I've been dealing with customers who they start all their meetings at five past the top of the hour. So when I'm setting up meetings with them, I know that I can't start the meeting at one o'clock. It has to start at 105, right? And as crazy as I know that that may sound to some of you guys, just think about what you could do with those five minutes, right? Whether you run to get some water or you take a bathroom break, or like we're talking about on today's episode, you take a few moments to just deep breathe and stand outside before you kind of hop back on the call, right? Like it's those small activities that you can do that really will allow making nature a priority. Today's episode is brought to you by the Merch Shop at the key to consistency.com. I would encourage you to visit our merch shop to see if there's anything that piques your interest. One of the easiest ways to be consistent is to be visually reminded that you are on a mission. You are going to be consistent. So whether you pick up a phone case or you pick up a t-shirt, we have something for you. Again, that is www.thekeytoconsistency.com. And I hope you enjoy the rest of this episode. Awesome guys. So the next thing that I want to talk to you guys about as it relates to nature is to think through how not only can you benefit from nature, but also nature needs you, right? We are very aware of what's been going on in our climate, what's been going on in the environment. You don't necessarily need to have a degree to kind of see what's going on. And by degree, I just simply mean you don't need to have a degree in like science or environmental science in order to see what's going on in the environment with the forest fires and the earth just being hotter, the glaciers melting, like you don't necessarily need a degree to see that the world around us is changing. And so just because we get so much from nature, we should do our part in order to continue to give back to the place that we call home, right? And what better way to do that than to think about how we can protect the place that we call home and protect nature, right? Thinking about how we can develop sustainable practices in our home and really prioritize environmental stewardship, right? Those are some of the things that are vital to maintaining the beauty and the ecological balance that we have with our planet for future generations, right? We want to get out of this mindset of, well, it's not impacting me, so it doesn't matter. No, it does matter because it's going to impact the generations after you who weren't here making these terrible decisions. And, but unfortunately, they have to reap the consequences of decisions that they didn't even get a say in. And so it would just help as humans, if we are a bit more cognizant about the things we're doing, right? So simple examples about recycling, right? We all know that we can recycle. We may not all recycle. Um, My hand is raised here as well. I don't recycle as nearly as often as I should, but it is something that we can do in order to make our world a better place, right? Being cognizant of, do you use plastic bags when you're in the grocery store or could you possibly leverage the reusable bags, right? Um, Yes, it is something else to remember, but again, it is worth it when we think about what we potentially lose in the balance, especially when we think about where our plastic oftentimes ends up in our ocean. And if you haven't seen or Googled what like the plastic looks like in our ocean, the plastic barges that are forming, I would encourage you to do so. I think it's very insightful to, to see. And of course, it's not just 
one person, one nation, one country, one continent, none of that. No one's pointing fingers, but we can all do something. And it starts with the individual deciding that they're going to do something to make a change to consistently, positively impact our environment. And so, of course, outside of those practices, some other things you can do is think about how you can possibly help conserve energy, how you can support sustainable products or practices or groups and organizations, right? Like people that are actively involved in your community. It could be there are organizations that plant trees. You could adopt a highway and help pick up litter. Like every small thing that you do helps push us toward a healthy your planet helps ensure that we're making the best decisions for the place that we call home. And that's really the point that I want to nail home to you guys. It's really about cultivating and creating a sustainable relationship and not just about feeling like, well, it doesn't matter because everything that you do matters the same way that everything that you say and what comes out of your mouth matters. Right. And so what is that going to to lead to ultimately? Right. When you begin to expose yourself consistently to nature. Right. And you begin to appreciate the sustainable practices and kind of practicing them more in order to protect the place that we call home. What ultimately ends up happening is that now you are developing a relationship and an appreciation for nature. Right. And what that ends up doing is really allows you to immerse yourself in the beauty of this natural world that God has given us, right? To notice the intricate patterns of a leaf that falls off of a tree, right? And to look at the vastness of the stars in the sky, right? Or if you've ever seen a perfect raindrop, I remember this may sound very crazy to some of you, but I remember seeing the perfect raindrop. And that may sound interesting because, you know, most of the time when rain drops, it just plops on the ground, right? But in this particular scenario, the rain was just like hanging on like the end of the patio bar. And so you could really see, like you could look into it. And of course it's water. So it was essentially a rainbow-like reflection of everything around it. And it was so beautiful just to sit and look at it because this particular raindrop did not plop to the ground and just, you know, make it wet. It literally managed to hold its form as a drop. And it was just a moment of just pure beauty of like, wow, like this is actually gorgeous. Like, this is amazing to just like see a, a raindrop in its natural element. And as simple and as, as small as that may be, those are the types of moments that we really want to get in the swing of appreciating as we're beginning to consistently expose ourselves to nature and really just being appreciative of the world around us. And so I would encourage you to practice mindfulness in nature as you go outdoors, make sure you engage in your senses. Again, making sure we clear our mind. Listen to the sounds that you're hearing. Don't listen to the noise and the voices that may be in your head telling you, hey, you have to do 10,000 other things. Why are you sitting outside? Why are you standing out here? Listen to the sound of the birds. Listen to Sometimes as crazy as this may sound, you can actually hear certain bugs that like fly past you. You can hear their wings beating in the air. Like listen to the sounds of nature. Look at the colors that you're seeing. Look at the leaves as they change colors. Like be in awe that the fact that one leaf can be green and it can turn into a shade of yellow and a shade of red all in the same leaf, all at the same time, showing how it's currently in the process of transitioning, right? Feel the tree trunk that you're walking past, right? Like feel the grass, right? Feel if you are one to walk outside barefoot, feel the grass underneath your feet, right? Like feel the earth and really feel connected to the thing that God created for us to live on and to enjoy, right? So many times we just, we get in the habit of just doing things and doing things. Okay, I'm going to get in my car. I'm going to leave out my garage. And you just really don't take the time 
time to appreciate the fact that we live in a very, very beautiful world that is full of so much diversity, right? Outside of just the humans, if we just think about the nature, like I I personally live in Georgia and it's interesting to me that in the same state, I can head down towards like Savannah, Georgia, and I can get to like a beach if I wanted to, but I can also head up to North Georgia and in a matter of a few hours, hours, I can be in the mountains, right? It's so wild that there's so much going on and not to mention other national treasures that we have, such as the Grand Canyon. Like there's just so much going on. There's so many things to just to look at and to take in and to really be appreciative of. And so it's just one of those things that I would encourage you as we end today's episode to really think about your relationship with nature, right? And what you can do to make nature a better place and also to enjoy more of it, right? And not just feel caught up in the hustle and bustle of life, right? Remember that nature is not just a place that we're going to visit. It's a home that we must protect. Like this is our home and we have to protect it. And of course, right, as you're starting your journey with nature, it's always easier to do these type of things with other people and not just by yourself, right? So I would encourage you, even if you're getting your kids off of the bus in the afternoon, take that extra five minutes with them and walk around the neighborhood. I'm sure they would enjoy it, right? I'm sure they would enjoy being able to ride their bikes for a little bit as you take a few you deep breaths and you may walk with your spouse as your kids ride their bike before you guys start on your homework just as a way to kind of be as a family and still continue to enjoy that nature right together whatever we do no matter how small it is we can create a brighter and a healthier future for ourselves and for those who are going to come after us so hopefully you guys heard something on today's episode that makes you want to go out and and embrace nature and really change the lens and the way in which you view nature. So of course, before we end today's podcast, I do want to wrap up with a Bible scripture. This one comes from Job chapter 12, verse 7 through 10. And it says, but ask the animals and they will teach you or the birds in the sky and they will tell you or speak to the earth and it will teach you or let the fish in the sea inform you, which of these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all mankind. Guys, I just, I love those verses because they really highlight the wisdom and the knowledge that can be gained from observing and learning from the natural world around us, recognizing that God's hand is behind every aspect of creation. So remember guys, consistency breeds mastery and transforms the ordinary into the extraordinary. Bye guys. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of The Key to Consistency. Wherever you are listening to this podcast, it would mean everything to me if you could rate it, review it, reach out to me on Instagram. would love your feedback. would love to hear anything you like, anything you don't like. Please feel free to share this episode with someone that you think could benefit from it. And until next time, bye guys.